hello. Well, today we are going to be talking about equivalence relations. Uh, so we are going to be considering only binary relations. R from SAA to itself. So relations in which A is equal to B. Alright. So I will start by introducing three properties. R is said to be reflexive if every element in A little a in A is related to itself. For every element A in the set A, the pair A, A, same. So, and sometimes in my hand uh, writing, I, I'm changing a little bit the, the, the font, but the Saturday same A, same element, is in that. Okay? That's reflexive. It's not that we can find one element in A or two elements in A that are related to themselves, respectively. It's that every single element in A is related to itself. All right. So, let me give you an example. All right, let A be the set of all people in the world and let R from A to A be the binary relation intentionally describe it as person one is related to person two if and not leave person one and person two are the same age. Okay? Well, what we need to verify now is that every person, whoever we pick, that person is going to be related to herself, himself. Yes, sir? But for that person to be related to herself, himself, the only thing that we need to verify is that, so we are taking the same person twice, we need to verify that these two persons, that is the same person twice, are the same age. But obviously everybody is the same age as herself, himself. So, according to this relation, Every single person, uh, every person, let me put it this way, because I don't want to cause any confusion. Every person 
is related to herself himself because everyone is the same age as herself himself. Good. So this is an example of a binary relation that is reflexive. All right. Now I'm gonna give you an example of a binary relation that is that fails to be reflexive. Okay. All right. So let's consider now just a slight modification of the previous example. A, the set A is the set of all people in the world. And let's consider the binary relation R from A to A. Now, establishing that person one is gonna be related to person two if and only if person one is older than person two. Is that okay? To prove that this relation is not reflexive, we just need to find one element in A, in this case, one person. It suffices to find one person. If we find more, it's just, more evidence but we don't need all that just one person that is not related to herself himself why because not is the following the definition of reflexive is telling us every element in a must be related to itself so all elements are related to themselves what we are doing is negating this because it's not reflexive now so not all means some and this sum is not giving us any information about the exact number so some means at least one so if we need to prove that it's reflexive we need to verify every single element in a that every single element in a is related is related to itself but to prove that it's not or to disprove that it's reflexive we just need to find at least one element, so one is good, that is not related to itself. Is that okay? That good? So, uh, obviously, I can take myself. I'm 40. So, if I take myself with myself, the second component is also 40. So, Person one is not older than person two. So this pair is not in the relation. So not every element in A is such that A, A is in the relation because I'm an element of A and this pair is not in the relation. So this relation R is not reflexive. Obviously, this relation is a little bit more than not reflexive because in this, this that I did with me, I can do it with anyone. So, in a non-reflexive relation, maybe we have all the elements in A and we have let's say some elements that are related to themselves and other elements that are not related to themselves. So in general, we can have this because it suffices to find one element that is not related to itself, but maybe there are other elements that are related to itself. So for to be reflexive, we need all to be reflexive, all elements related to themselves. To be not reflexive, we need at least one that is not related to uh, itself but in this case nobody's gonna be related to herself himself so this is the worst scenario according to reflexivity that is this property here is it okay all right the second property is gonna be uh, symmetry so the binary relation are is said to be
symmetry. If and only if for all elements A in A and A hat in A if the pair A I say they hat so A hat is in R then a hat A is also in R. Okay? So in other words, this means that if an element A is related to an element A hat. I'm not using another here because maybe I'm considering the same element. I'm not claiming here that A and A hat are different. So if an element A is related to an element A hat, both in the set A, then a hat is related to A as well. Right? So this is not necessarily the case. And well, there are classic examples in real life that are not of binary relations that are not symmetric. For example, person one is in love with person two. Unfortunately, that binary relation is not symmetric. Maybe there is a person who is in love with another one, and that second person is not in love, okay, with the first one. There is not that correspondence. So, but let's see an example of a binary relation that it is symmetric the same second example that we uh, did before order than is not symmetric okay I have my student here Abraham obviously I'm older than him and so the pair Jirko Abraham is going to be in the relation given intentionally by the property person one is older than person two but Abraham Yurko is not going to be in that relation because he isn't uh, older than me. So, okay? So that's another example of a binary relation that is not symmetric, but the one that we saw, first example that we saw is symmetric. Same age. Okay? Obviously, if I'm the same age as another person, that second person is the same age as me. So both pairs, Jirko, that person is in the relation. That person, Jirko, is going to be in the relation as well. But let me give you one more just to provide as many examples as possible. All right? Mm, all right. Let's continue with A. As they say, of all people in the world, and let R from A to A be the binary ratio. Given by person one is 
is related to person two. If person one and person two attended the same school. In 2020, in 2020, so obviously in this case, let's say that person one, person two is a pair in this relation is because person one and person two were attending a the same school in 2020 all right and obviously this is independent so person one was attending the same school as person two this is what this pair is telling us but in that case person two was attending the same school as person one in 2020 so this pair is also in the relation and this independent of which person uh, we are considering so every time a person is related to another that second person is going to be related to the first so this is an example of a asymmetric binary relation okay all right let's consider a second example now now i will suppose that the set a is the set whose elements are alpha beta and gamma and uh, let's consider now the binary relation R from A to A the binary relation extensionally given by or described as They said whose elements are the pairs alpha alpha, the pairs beta beta, and the pair gamma gamma. Right? Is this binary relation symmetric? Oh, let's see what is this telling us. This is telling us if an element, so it's pretty important that you to. Stress this if. If an element A is related to an element A hat, just in that case, we need A hat related to A. So this is not telling us that for sure we have pairs with different components. Nothing here is telling us that. So alpha is related to alpha. Obviously alpha. So if we switch the components here, we are going to get the same pair, so no problem. A, in this case, A is alpha, A hat is alpha, so alpha, alpha is satisfied. So this is good. This pair means beta is red to beta, but if we look at it in the opposite direction, beta is also red to beta, it's producing the same pair. And the same for gamma, gamma is red to gamma. But if we look in the other direction, it's gamma red to gamma as well. So yes, this is a symmetric binary range. Right? So nothing here is telling us that we need a uh, pairs with different components that we need an exact number of pairs nothing like that 
If we have an element related to another, or to a second element, that second element must be related to the first. In the case that we have a first related to a second. Obviously, a binary relation, in a binary relation, uh, it's a non empty subset of the Cartesian product. In this case, of A Cartesian product A. So we need at least one pair there. So, do you think that there is an example of a symmetric binary relation that uh, consists of exactly one pair? Well, let's see. If I consider the same set A and R now is the relation alpha alpha, this relation is symmetric. Alpha is related to alpha, but if we, so alpha is related to alpha. A, a, a is alpha, A hat is alpha. But then A hat that is alpha is related to A that is alpha, so no problem. Okay? And we never enter here again because we don't have any other pair. But nothing here is telling us that we need to enter here three times, 20 times. Yes or no? So there is not any other pair, so that's it. Never we have a contradiction with this. So yes, there are bi symmetric binary relations uh, consisting exactly of one pair. Ah, but if I give you this relation now, alpha comma beta is the only pair in this relation. Is this symmetric? No, because now we have an element A that is related to an element A hat. In this case, A hat is beta, but A hat is not related to A. So if we have this pair in the binary relation, in a symmetric binary relation, what the, this symmetry is telling us is that we need also the pair beta alpha. But we don't need anything else, just this. Because what a binary relation, a symmetric binary relation, is demanding uh, for is that every time we have an element related to another, that second element is going to be related to the first. Every time we have that pair. But it's not asking for specific number of pairs. Is that okay? So every time we have this pair, if we switch the components, the resulting pair is there as well. But it's every time we have that pair. How many times we have it? No problem. We don't know. It can be any number. Is that okay? So that's good. So this is symmetry. Basically, if you want for, a, for an example like this in which we have a finite number of pairs, it's pretty easy. What means symmetry? That if we go over all pairs and we switch the components, every time we switch the components of one pair, the resulting pair is there. If we switch the components here, the resulting pair is exactly the same pair, so it's also there. If we switch the components here, the resulting pair is exactly the same pair, it's there. If we switch the components here, the resulting pair is exactly this pair, so it's there. Is that okay? So it's symmetric. When the relation is not symmetric, if we switch the component of one pair and the resulting pair is not there, it suffices to find one pair such that when we, fit, uh, when we switch the components, the resulting pair is not there for the relation to fail to be symmetric. But if for all pairs, for every pair in the relation, Switching the components leads us to another pair of the relation. The relation is symmetric. Is that okay? Good. Oh, well, the last property that we are going to see today is transitivity. So uh, let R from A to A be a binary relation of. Oh. R is said to be transitive if and only if. For all A in A, A hat in A, and A prime in A, if 
again, second edition here. E, the Paris, A, A hat is in the range. And A hat, A prime. So the pairs A, A hat, and A hat, A prime are in the relation, then A, A prime must be in the relation. So if this is happening, then we need this. If this is not happening, no problem. Is that okay? So let, let, me, let me put a simple example, and let me go over these conditions what is this telling us? Again, this if, you need to stress this if here. What is this telling us? What this if is telling us is that we need to check for every single configuration like this. Every single configuration of two pairs in which the second component of the first is equal to the first component of the second pair. We need, this is what this is telling us. You need to check all these configurations. If you don't have this configuration, no problem. If this is not, if this is not satisfied, no problem. Okay? You don't need that in that case. But every time you have a configuration like this, that needs to be satisfied. Okay? So basically, let, 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 let me explain this in a different way. I can decompose this pair into three elements. A, A hat, a prime and with these three elements i'm forming my intention is to form two pairs if i'm forming two pairs why am i using just three elements because i'm using one element as the second component of the first pair as as the first uh, component of the second pair. And what? There is much more precise if I say at most three elements because nothing here is telling us that the, these three elements are different. Okay? So this is what I refer by configuration. Every single configuration of three elements is what I need to check. And this if is, are they forming a two pairs in the relation? And in the case that the answer is yes, I need this third pair. In the case that the answer is no, I don't need this. So I'm going to put a pretty small example for you to see what I'm doing. Maybe, maybe it's going to be clear because I know that this... So getting the intuition, getting the intuition is pretty easy. But in many cases, there are gaps in, in that intuition. So you don't get... I, I want you to grasp this concept pretty well. So I will suppose that I, I will do it. Okay. Okay. If I give you three elements as before, three elements in A, as I did before, I'm gonna have 27 configurations I don't want. Too many, so I'm gonna use just two. I think it's gonna be good. Obviously, this is symmetric, and you can see it most likely, but I want to run this definition with that example for you to see. Okay. Okay, how many possibilities I have for these elements? Alpha, alpha, and alpha. Alpha for all of them. Yes, sir? Is it okay? We have this relation here, and uh, we, are go we are going to verify whether this uh, relation is transitive for now. Okay? Well, we need to go over all the configurations that we have of three elements, not necessarily different. So, how many configurations I have? Well, I can use alpha here. The, the only thing that I can do is put here either alpha or beta, alpha or beta, alpha or beta. So, that's what I'm going to do. Okay? How many configurations I have? Eight, because two configurations Two possibilities for this one, alpha or beta. Two possibilities for this one, either alpha or beta. Two possibilities for this one, either alpha or beta is two times two times two, two to the third, that is eight. Eight configurations. So the first one is gonna be alpha, alpha, alpha. 
the second one I'm gonna put alpha, alpha, beta. The third one I'm gonna put alpha, beta, alpha. Beta, alpha, alpha. Is that good? All right. Now we put alpha, beta, beta. Beta, alpha, beta. Beta, beta, alpha. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the last one is beta, beta, beta. Okay. So with this configuration of elements, which are the pairs that I'm getting? Alpha, alpha, and alpha, alpha. So if alpha, alpha is in the relation, if alpha, alpha is in the relation, and alpha, alpha is in the relation, in that case, I need alpha, alpha. But alpha, alpha is, in the, is not in the relation, so no problem. This doesn't mean that the relation is not transitive. This means that we don't have that, so the if, the condition that we are putting here is not satisfied. If the condition that we are putting here is not satisfied, we don't need to check that. Okay? So no problem. So far we are good. Even though this is not satisfied. Because what we want is that every time this is satisfied, this is satisfied. But if this is not satisfied, like in this case, no problem. Is that okay? All right. Now, what is the configuration? What, which are the pairs that this configuration, this configuration are giving us? Alpha, alpha, and alpha, beta. If alpha, alpha, if alpha, alpha is in R and alpha, beta is in R, then I need alpha, beta in R. In that case, but alpha, alpha is not in R. So this is not satisfying. I don't, I don't need to check anything else. So far, we are good. Okay. What is this? Alpha. Beta as the first pair. And beta alpha as the second one. This is telling us if alpha beta is in R and alpha beta is in R and Beta alpha is in R, beta alpha is in R. Ah, now this is satisfied. Okay? In that case, we need the pair alpha alpha. But alpha alpha is not here. Since this is satisfied, and this is not, sorry, and this is not satisfied, this relation R fails to be transitive. And I don't need to check anything else because I already found a case in which this is not certified and that suffices, okay? That suffices to conclude that A is not transitive because this all, what is telling us is you need to check all this configuration and this if it's telling us if that configuration is giving us a two pairs satisfying these conditions and then we need to verify for this one or not. Is what this if is telling us. Verify all of them, but only some of these configurations are worthy to continue verifying the further verification. If this condition is not satisfied, that doesn't mean that transitivity is failing. That means that that is not a configuration worthy to go further. Is that okay? Like in these two cases, this condition was not satisfied, no problem. We continue. We just move to the next one. Ah, this one. Ah, this one. This condition is satisfied. If that condition is satisfied, then we need this one. But that, the second, this one was verified and this no, ah, transitivity in that case is failing. Is that okay? So this is telling us, either for a, a relation to be transitive, either 
we are obtaining two pairs that are not satisfying these conditions, or we are obtaining two pairs that if this condition is satisfying, then this third pair is in the relation as well. That's transitive. Or this condition fails to be satisfied, or if this condition is satisfied, then this one is satisfied. Okay? But if this one is satisfied, and that one no, just for any three elements, then the relation fails to be transitive. Is that it? We have these three properties, right? Reflexive, that means for every A in A, the pair AA is in the relation symmetry. That means for all A and A hat in A, if A, A hat is in R, then A hat A is in R, and transitive, that means for all A, A hat, a prime in A. If A, A hat is in R and A hat, A hat, A prime is in R, then A, A prime is in R. Okay? These are the three properties that we have. We have okay, seen some examples. And we have the following definition now. Definition a binary relation R from A to A is said to be an equivalent relation. If R is simultaneously reflexive, symmetry, and transit. Okay, so an equivalence relation is a binary relation from a set to itself that satisfies all three properties at the same time. So, okay, so if we want to verify that a given binary relation is an equivalence relation, well, first, that relation must be using the same set, the same set for both components. And in addition, it needs to be reflexive, symmetry, and transit. So, okay, so let's see an example. So now let's consider this as a science in which is asking for us to verify whether this binary relation R, that is, this is the set A now. So the set A is a set of pairs, is Z Cartesian product, so the set of integer numbers, Cartesian product, the set of integer numbers, and this. Uh, means that we are excluding zero from the set of, sec uh, of second components in this Cartesian group. To itself, given by a pair A comma B is related to a pair P comma Q, if A times Q is equal to B times P. Okay, so we need to verify if this is an equivalence uh, relation, all right? So equivalence relation means that these three properties are met at the same time. So let's start by verifying reflexive. Is R reflexive? Well, we need to verify that every element here is related to itself. So let A comma B be any element in uh, 
I don't need to, this parent is now, so Z Cartesian product, Z asked. That uh, means that we are not considering zero, so B is not zero. Okay? To verify that this element is related to itself, means that we are considering that element twice, so B is equal to A and Q is equal to B. Yes or no? Oh. Since this condition here becomes A, that is the first component of the first pair, but we are considering this pair again. So times B, that is the second component of the second pair, is equal to B, that is the second component of the first pair, times P, that is the first component of the second pair, but now we are considering this pair twice, so the first component of the second pair is A as well. So since A times B is equal to B times A, that is this condition here, considering this pair twice, A comma B, comma A comma B, is okay so this element is related to itself and i'm doing this a little bit on purpose because now I notice that the elements in this relation are pairs but the elements in the set a are also pairs so the elements in the relations are pairs of pairs so okay so no problem with that all right but every element in the set A that is a Cartesian product, so this element is related to itself. But all these is just one element because of the nature of the elements in the given set A. Is that okay? So this element is related to itself. Whichever element, whichever pair we consider from the set A, so is reflexive. All right. Okay. So is this relation now uh, symmetric? Well, let's see. Let uh, let's suppose that we have any pair A B P Q in the relation. So an element A comma B that is related to an element P comma Q. What this means? What this means and what do we need to verify in order to uh, conclude that this relation here is symmetric? Well, what we need to verify is that P comma Q comma A comma B is in R. That's what we need to verify, okay? But what do we know? Since this is in R, this tells us that A times Q is equal to uh, B times P. This is what this is telling us. And what do we need? We need now that first component times second component here. So P times B is equal to Second component of first pair, that is Q times A. That's what we need. But these are exactly the same. So, this ensures that PQ, comma A, comma B is also in R. And this is independent on whichever elements A, B, P, and Q we are considering. So this is valid for all the configurations that we have of pairs in R. So it's symmetric. Okay. Well, so far we have that the relation is reflexive, it's also symmetric, and the, we need to verify that uh, well, if it is transitive. 
Okay? If at least one of these properties fails, it's not an equivalence relation. We need all of them to conclude that this is an equivalence relation. Yes, sir? Well, now let's suppose that we have a comma b comma p comma q is a pair in the relation and also this second component of this pair must be the first component of another pair so we use c d is also a pair of the, of the relation yes sir and we need to conclude that a comma b comma c comma d is in the relation okay since we are not specifying the elements here, this is valid every time we have this configuration. If we uh, accomplish to prove or manage to prove that a comma b is equal to c, uh, sorry, that a comma b comma c comma d is a pair in the relation, the relation is going to be transitive. Is that okay? This first, this means that. A times Q is equal to B times P. And this means that P times D, P times D is equal to Q times C. All right, this is what we want. And what we need. What we need is A times D equals to B times C. That's what we need. Yes, sir. If we want to conclude that the pair A comma B comma C comma D is in the relation. All right. How can we get that? Oh. Okay. Oh, if we multiply these two, we are going to get that A times Q times P times D is equal to the multiplication of these two because this is equal to this. So if we replace this by this, Nothing changed because it's the same number as this one, so I can keep this one, but I can also replace this one by Q times C. So we get that A times Q times P times D is equal to B times P times Q times C. Yes, sir. All right. But notice that B is different from zero. Q is different from zero. Because in A, we are removing zero from the set of second components. So the second components cannot be zero. Okay? Q is different from zero. And D is different from zero. Is that good? All right. So, since Q is different from zero, I can. Oh, sorry. Cancel uh, these Qs with each other, which is telling us that A times P times D is equal to B times P times C. And now here we have two possibilities. P, well, P is the first component, so first component can be zero. So either P is zero or, either, or P is uh, different from zero. If P is zero, if P is zero, let, let me do it here. Either P is zero or P is different from zero. If P is zero, 
or we go here, P0, since Q is different from zero, A must be zero, because otherwise A and Q would be different from zero. This product would be different from zero, but P0 and this is zero. In that case, this, this equality uh, wouldn't be satisfied. So if P0, the right hand side, is zero, we need this one zero, but Q is different from zero, so A must be zero. So if P zero, A is zero, and also here, P zero, this side is zero, we need this side zero as well, but Q cannot be zero, so C must be zero. And Z zero. So, so A times D is equal to B times C because A is zero, C is zero, so A times D is zero times D, which is zero, B times C is b times zero which is zero so zero equal to zero so no problem so far we are good if p is different from zero then we know this and we are going to have that a times p times d is equal to b times p times c and in this case, I can cancel this piece with each other. Notice that that's the reason I'm doing all this, because if I don't know that P is different from zero, like I knew with Q, if I don't know that P is different from zero, I cannot divide the piece. I cannot divide the equation by P. So okay, I cannot cancel the piece. So that's the reason I'm doing all this. And again, oh. A times D is equal to B times C. Okay? So, always we have managed to conclude this, which tells us this ensures that the pair A comma B comma C comma D is in the relation because A times D is equal to B times C as required by the uh, intention and definition of the relation. So this relation is also transitive. The three conditions are satisfied and this is an example of a relation that is an equivalence relation. Is that okay? Well, next class we are gonna see uh, more examples and I will introduce the notion of quotient set. All right. And that's all for today. Thank you.